This video is brought to you by Miniature Market. Thousands of board games, discounted prices, miniaturemarket.com. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today we're going back to the Roaring Twenties, back to the times of Prohibition, where we're going to be one of three different uh, sort of gangster uh, factions, and we're going to be secretly trying to figure out who's on our team, and also trying to sell as much of our secret liquor that we can. Today we're talking about Booze Barons. This is for three to nine players, ages 12 and up. Takes anywhere from 25 to 45 minutes, usually closer to the half hour mark there. Uh, let me show you what's played, and I'll see you on the other side. At the beginning of Booze Barons, you get to pick your character, and it's also your color. Here's what the artwork looks like in the game. Here's some more characters. And here are the last three characters. And each of the characters comes with their own little standee that you'll be using to move around all of the boards. Now in this game, there are three different mobs, and they are by color, blue, red, and yellow. Or you can see them by color if you're colorblind with, you know, the hex circle or square. You are going to be secretly given one of these liquor types at the beginning of the game. They're going to be randomly uh, split up between however many players there are. You may or may not be on the team of another one of these monsters. You won't really know and it really depends on how many players are in the game. So you'll get one of these cards and let's say I get this one. I know that I'm secretly uh, trying to sell Lucky Lightning, and I'm on the blue mob team, or the hex mob team there. And I'm throughout the game trying to figure out who my teammates are. I'm trying to find out who my teammates aren't, who's on these teams, and expose them and figure out which liquor that they are, that basically they're trying to sell. For example, in a six player game, here's six players. These would have been secretly given to them. People wouldn't be seeing these, but for the video I'm showing them. In this case, there's even amount. Two blues, two reds, and two yellows. And I'm gonna try to figure out who my partner is and try to expose the others. But if there's a five player game, uh, two cards of each color will be get dealt down and one of them won't be. So I possibly could be on my own team, but I won't know that. All we know is that in a five player game, one person will be on their own team. And of course with more players, there's gonna be some teams of three, some teams of two, there's gonna be uneven teams, but it all works out in the end. So at the beginning of the game, I have my player aid, my standee, some cards with my character on them, and my secret booze, which nobody knows, but you guys know it's Lucky Lightning. The player aid has actions on them and has all the different booze types and which boozes are from which of the three different factions. So the object of this game is you're trying to get as many delivery cards at these different areas of the booze that you are basically selling. But you're trying to keep that secret at the same time trying to figure out what everybody else is selling and trying to expose them. At the beginning of the game these six locations are put face up and these are the different places you can go. So let's talk about how our turn works. Now at the beginning of the game there's going to be nine what's called delivery cards and they're going to be put in certain locations. When one is drawn an icon tells us which place to put it. This is dice. It would go to where the dice one is. And we start with nine of those. After every round of every actions, more of them are going to be added each time. So these delivery locations are what you're trying to sort of go and deliver your booze of your type and bring it back. So on your turn it's very simple, it's simultaneous play. My cards basically have an icon, one card for each of the icons of the different spots. Maybe I want to go here, maybe I want to go here. This place has nothing but you can activate some abilities, more on that later. You're going to decide which place you want to go. And if you remember, my secret booze was Lucky Lightning. No one else would know this. And so I see a card that has the Lucky Lightning on there. So maybe I'll try to go there. So secretly, I know I'm going to go to where the table is. I'm going to put my card down and everybody will do that. Once everybody's cards are down, we flip them up and you move your standee to the location that you're going in. So maybe I'll just put them down so you can see them better. Once we've all gone to a spot, by the way, we're going to go with this booze baron. This is the first player token. This player is going to get to do an action. Now, there's basically three major actions you can do. You can deliver, which is simply, I'm gonna just take this card because I just delivered my liquor, and I place it face up in front of me so everybody can see it. Now, the other thing, this lady may, instead of wanting to take this delivery card, maybe I took the one she wanted, and she doesn't want this one. If you're at the same location as somebody, you can tail that person. And what that means is that over the course of the games, this round, any cards you get this round are face up. After this round, any card you have is face down. So over the course of the game, I might end up with 
you know, a few or three or four cards face down in front of me like this, this person can tail me because they are right in the same spot as me. And what they do is they take my cards and they can look at them. And for 20 seconds, she can decide to either take one of these or try to expose me. Now what she's trying to do is look, she's looking for the, the same thing because every card you take has to have your secret booze on it. So I have it here, I have it here, I have it here. But I've done a good job because all three cards also have Big Gus Brandy and all three cards, uh, let's see, that's it right now. So, so they, they know that I'm probably one of these two items. So if they already know that somebody already guessed this, then they know I have that, they could try to expose me. But maybe they don't know yet and they don't, they don't wanna make a guess. They could just steal one of these and put it in front of them face up. But if they did wanna expose me, they could say, I think you, our, our big house brandy, that's what you're trying to steal. And if I say no, then that's just the end of that player's turn. If I say yes, that's me, then I have to expose uh, my booze so everybody can see what mob I'm in. Now everybody knows which team I'm on and whether they're on theirs or, or not. And they know that no one else is, has this because there's only one of these cards in the whole game. Now in addition to that, if she got it correctly, not only did she expose me, the movement card that I used to go there, which was the table, she gets to keep. This essentially is two coins at the end of the game, so I'm giving this to her. That makes me minus two coins in the game and her plus two, so that's a four-point swing for them exposing me. Also, the first player that, that, that uh, snitches on somebody and finds it out gets this, and that's another point at the end of the game. And there's a second one of these if there's seven or more players, but this is just gives you an incentive to be the first person to rat somebody out. Now, if someone like me got exposed and I did have to flip my card up, I'm still in the game. It's not player elimination. I still get to do all my actions. Just everyone knows what I am. And now when I go around, I since I know who might be on my team now or vice versa, my actions may change. I may decide to you know, go tail other people, or maybe I just want to get a bunch of my cards to try and, you know, up my points by the end of the game, but I'm not out of the game. So I took a delivery card, she she tailed me, and again, she could either steal a card or try to expose me, but instead of doing that, she could activate the ability of this certain location. This one says, choose another player. That player may collect up to two delivery cards that match their boost type from any location. So she knows who her partner is, it's later in the game. It's good to do this because that person can get anything from anywhere. Let's look at some of the other tiles' abilities. So because you saw that when somebody went to the same spot as me, they can tail you. So if you're trying to tail somebody, you're trying to guess which location they're going to. But sometimes you don't need to if they're sitting next to you because some of the tiles tail the player seated to your right. So I could go there if I really want to tail the person sitting to my right. There's another one, tail the player to your left. There is uh, steal a delivery card that matches your booze type from the player seated to your left or right. If that player still has more delivery cards, you may steal a second one. So you can, you can mess with people that way. You can only be tailed by players who are at this location with you. Uh, it, and then this event is automatically activated. So when someone goes there, they're gonna get to tail you and do another action, like maybe take a delivery card from there um, or, or what have you. And we have here, reveal the top three cards, the delivery deck, that's the deck that has all the booze cards in them. And you must uh, keep any number of those delivery cards that match your booze type, then discard any, so that's there. Now each of these tiles, this is side A, has a side B with a different ability. So once you get good at the game, you can swap them all to B, you can do some A, some B, and it gives the, the game a lot of replayability. Once everybody has done their one action, essentially we're gonna do another round. We would draw uh, the delivery deck, we would draw up a number of cards equal to half the number of players uh, rounded up, and we would put them in the, 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 the different locations that they match. And then we would start a new round, the booze bearer and the start player would move clockwise, and we would do this again. Now, this would continue until there's, there's like one or less exposed players. Now also, when you're moving around to different spots, if I went here last time, I can't go there again, so you can't stay in the same spot. Uh, so we do that until everyone is exposed except one player, and then we go to scoring. At the end of the game, the team with the most money wins. And you count up your points as each one of these that I had my delivery car with my uh, with my, my liquor on it is basically worth a coin. So it's one, two, three. And each of my action cards are worth two. So it's two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. I got this from exposing the red player. So I got his card. That's 14, 15, 16, 17. Now you also get minus two points if you happen to have exposed, meaning I got this person's card that was on my team. They had the same, uh, they're in the same faction as me. And that just stops people from trying to expose their teammates if they if they think they're about to get exposed from an opponent. And essentially this, this comes here and it's minus two 
uh, for us. And if I had a six card, that would have been a 17. So I would have seven, uh, 16, and I would look and see if there's another blue player. If there is, we add up our points. That's our team total. If there's an odd amount of teams, let's just say I was a two-player team and somebody else was a one, they double their points, and we see that. And it goes a little bit different with two and three players. Essentially, with, with a three-player game, if you have two, uh, three players, you take the lowest and the highest uh, scores, and the two-player team take their normal scores. And whoever has the most money is the winner. All right, well, there is Booze Barons. Well, if you know me and my videos, you know I love deduction games. I also love social deduction games. Uh, this one is interesting to me for many reasons. Number one, hey, let me talk about the things I liked about the game. Uh, I, I liked that there was a wide range of players that you could play this with, from three all the way to nine. Uh, it feels differently with different ones, but the, but the interesting thing is how they made it work with odd numbers of players. Meaning, you know, you play with five players, and you know, two of you are gonna be on teams and one's gonna be sort of left out. And you think that would like, it would ruin the game it, it, whenever there's some odd number of teams and odd number of players, but it doesn't really do it because of the scoring, you know, the, the way they figured out the scoring that I've mentioned in the overview. So I really like how it doesn't matter how many players you're playing, each game sort of feels different, di feels very different at those different player counts and your objectives are different trying to find whether I have a partner or not. That part made me feel uh, like a deduction game that I love made my top five deduction games, which is Incognito. And I love that aspect of someone here could be my secret partner. I've got to figure out who it is and who it's not. And you're looking at cards and you're trying to figure that out. And I like that intrigue part of this. Uh, but get your expectations straight. This is more of a light deduction game versus, say, a social deduction game. You know, people go in here and I start explaining the game and I start telling them, hey, you got a secret role, you're trying to figure out who others are, and they think it's going to be all about social deduction. It's really not. Uh, it's really more about watching what other people are doing, watching who accuses who of what, and using that for information, then when you look, you have some more information. It's really more about light deduction than social deduction. Also, don't be tricked up into thinking that this is a memory game. Sure, there are memory elements, but if you go into it thinking, I'm gonna try to remember everything that, that, that everybody puts down when they when they take one of those cards and puts it face up, your brain will explode. And that's not really the, 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 the hopes for this game. The, the face up is really for after you've gotten some information on some people, uh, basically whether you've looked at their cards or you've, you've seen someone accuse them and you've got some information to go off of with them, and then as they start revealing cards as they take them and you look at them, it's just one more piece of information that narrows it down. So people tried to treat this like a memory game and some people didn't like it because of that, but I don't think it really is a memory game, so don't let that part uh, fool you in here. So it is more deduction. So people that like uh, social deduction, but maybe not, not real sort of logical deduction might not like this as much. I liked it a lot because I do like the deductive aspects of this. I like how it's quick on your turn. You like the simultaneous action selection. You're going, you're moving to a place. You're trying to like figure out where people are going. I, I think I know who this guy is. I'm gonna try to tell him where would he might be going right now? Which places have the liquors that I think he is? I'm gonna try to meet him there. Or maybe you're lucky enough to be sitting next to him and you can go and try to tail him from one of the special abilities. The, the, the turns are quick. You've got some, even though they're quick and it's simple, it's like pretty easy. You're going and you're, you're either gonna tail somebody or do an action or take a card. It's pretty simple. I like it. It's quick, it's easy. It has the layers of depth. It has some layers of, so you can possibly bluff. In the last game, I, I, I picked up the guy's card next, next to me. I tailed him. I could tell he was on my team. He didn't know it. And I guessed that he was what mine was and it threw everybody else off. So there's a slight little, little bluffing there. I liked it. Uh, if So the, the only things I didn't like, I'd say the components and the artwork looks, I know they went for that sort of muted color type of thing, but I think it just makes the game, uh, you know, it, it's, it's, it's production value or it's, it's, it's the perception of its production value goes down because of the way that the art was sort of faded purposely to give it that, that 20s look. Uh, and it just makes it look a little cheaper than probably it should. But overall, I like the game. Uh, I liked it more than everybody that I've played this with. I've played it with probably seven other different people and everybody liked it, but I liked it the most because it has that deductive element. What I would have, what would have made me like this game more is if it came with some deduction sheets because with a lot of people, especially with more than say five, you're trying to remember what people accused other people because that's a huge deal in this because you typically won't accuse somebody the same, the same faction that you are because you don't want uh, that by accident to, 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 to expose them because you get minus points. So learning what people have, have asked other people is very important. And I just wish there was like a little cheat sheet, deduction sheet that came with this to keep track of that. I understand they probably didn't want to do that because they want to keep the game moving. But when I play this game, I'm going to bring out a little sheet and take little notes and allow other people to do the same thing. It will still move fast. But for me, 
that allows me to put away the memory aspect of the game even further and take and take some notes. And I won't be taking notes of what people put up in front of their face, but when people accuse, I'll just go, okay, he's not this, he's not this, he might be this, he accused him of this. For me, that would give it more enjoyability, but I'm a deduction freak. You might not need to do that. But overall, good solid game, one I like quite a bit, and that's Booze Barons. This video was sponsored by Miniature Markets Review Corner. The Review Corner features podcasts, video, and written game reviews by gamers for gamers. Miniature Market, the online gaming superstore. Thousands of board games, discounted prices. Check them out at miniaturemarket.com.